Hello all of you wonderful people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com and today I've got something seriously messed up to talk about. No, it's not my love life, but instead horror movies that potentially took things a little bit too far, especially when it came to their endings. Now we all know that horror films only rarely end on a positive note, but these ones well, they went a step further. So let's take a look, my friends. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are eight horror movies with seriously messed up endings. Number eight, The Descent. So a year after the tragic death of her husband and daughter in a car accident, the still grieving Sarah goes on a recuperative, spelunking adventure with a group of outdoorsy girlfriends. While they're exploring a particularly claustrophobic passage in an unexplored cave system, Rockfall blocks their only way out. And as if being trapped miles beneath the surface of the earth with little hope of rescue wasn't terrifying enough, it soon transpires that the group weren't alone when they find the caves are also inhabited by a subterranean humanoid creature with a taste for human flesh. Rut row, Raggy. After a lot of people die, only Sarah and her friend Juno remain. And I use the term friend loosely here because Juno turns out was having an affair with her husband before he died. So Sarah stabs Juno in the leg with a pickaxe, which is pretty understandable given the circumstances, and leaves her for dead but then she falls down a hole and is briefly knocked unconscious. She quickly awakens, however, to see daylight and manages to escape the caves. Hysterical, she finally reaches the car and drives away, only to be startled by the ghostly apparition of Juno sitting next to her. Now, if you've only seen the American version, here's where the movie ends, which is a good enough jump scare ending, right? But the original British cut, well, it had an ending that was far more depressing. This scene cuts back to the cave where Sarah awakens, having dreamt of her escape, and the camera pans out as we hear the screeching creatures advancing upon her. No final girl for us. Number seven, Eden Lake. Loved up couple Jenny and Steve head off to the English countryside for a camping trip beside the titular lake. But unfortunately for them, their romantic getaway is interrupted by a group of disaffected British youths, led by ringleader Brett, who wage an increasingly violent assault on the couple. The couple try to escape by car, but end up crashing, trapping Steve in the vehicle while Jenny leaves to find help. But the teens find Steve and brutally attack him. And so the couple end up tied to a woodpile, about to be set alight by them. Yeah, things definitely escalate. Realizing that Steve has succumbed to his wounds, Jenny escapes the body bonfire and after taking out a few teens herself, heads to the nearest town for help. Now she makes it to town and finds a backyard party where she promptly faints in front of the seemingly friendly partygoers. She awakens inside their house, but then soon the realization hits that the home that she's in is that of the ringleader Brett's parents and the partygoers tending to her wounds are actually parents of the kids who've been terrorizing her. She heads to the bathroom, but as the parents parents put two and two together and register that this mysterious gate crasher has actually killed their kids, she realizes that she has no chance of escape. The parents drag Jenny off and as we hear her terrified screams, the camera pans to Brett in his bedroom as he shuts the door to drown out her cries. Bleak. Number six, The Wicker Man. This classic horror follows pious Scottish police sergeant Howie as he travels to a remote island named Summer Isle, which is famed for its unusually abundant fruit harvests. He's there to investigate the disappearance of a young girl after receiving an anonymous tip-off. He's met with uncooperative islanders who deny the missing girl's existence and discovers that they practice paganism and do pagan things like having sex in fields and making their kids dance around phallic maypoles, which just, just don't do that. Weird. As he searches for the girl, Howie soon finds evidence that the islanders partake in ritual sacrifices to appease their pagan gods and also ensure a fruitful harvest, and that Rowan may be the next lamb to the slaughter. Luckily, he finds the girl and tries to escape Summer Isle, but they are intercepted by the islanders, who Rowan then happily trots off towards. He's been had. It was never the girl that the islanders intended to sacrifice, but instead, it was him. The islanders force him into a giant wooden effigy, set to light and gather around to sing a little folk ditty to their pagan gods. Howie, a devout man, even as he's being burned alive, starts praying reciting psalms but is drowned out by the chanting of the islanders as the wicker man is engulfed by flames and a fiery sun sets in the west. Oof. Number 5. Night of the Living Dead Do I really need to explain the plot of the Night of the Living Dead? It's an absolute classic, and if you haven't seen it, then you owe it to yourself to do so right now. They're zombies. They're everywhere. They eat flesh, they're little rascals, and they've trapped a few people inside an isolated farmhouse, which soon gets overrun. Ben, the protagonist, is the only person equipped enough to deal with the dead rising from their graves, and as the night goes on, it wears down to only him being alive. Ben survives the night and by morning finds that the zombie horde is being thinned out by a group of 
of gun-toting redneck-looking dudes. He cautiously goes to make his way outside, and just when we think our hero is going to make it, bang, the redneck shoots him, mistaking him for yet another zombie. His lifeless body is then unceremoniously dumped on a pyre and burnt alongside the corpses of the living dead. Although Romero himself has said that Jones's casting was merely just because he was the best man for the part as opposed to being a political statement for the movie, it is undeniably evocative of America's racial tensions, which makes the finale all the more bleak. Number 4. Martyrs this French horror film starts with a young girl named Lucy escaping from an avatar where she's been held captive and abused for years. She's placed in an orphanage where she makes friends with a girl named Anna. Fast forward 15 years and Lucy has found and murdered her captors and requests Anna's help in burying the bodies, but ends up committing suicide. Anna doubts her friend's claims, but soon finds an imprisoned young girl and tries to help her escape before she is apprehended by a secret society led by the sinister Mademoiselle, who shoots the girl dead and takes Anna captive. Mademoiselle and her mates have got it in their heads that by kidnapping young women and torturing them, that their subjects will achieve transcendence, become martyrs, and be able to see the secrets of the afterlife. After subjecting Anna to daily beatings, Mademoiselle decides that she's reached the final stage and skins her alive. Somehow still conscious, Anna reaches a euphoric state and is asked by Mademoiselle what she's actually seen. Anna whispers something that we don't actually hear, and the next day, as the secret society gather to hear what Mademoiselle Mademoiselle has to say, she tells her assistants to keep doubting and promptly shoots herself in the head, leaving her followers, as well as us viewers for that matter, without an answer. It's an ending that's ambiguous, nihilistic, and depressing for the protagonist, antagonist, and us poor horror fans as well. Brill. Number 3. Inside quite possibly one of the most brutal movies to come out of the new French extremity movement, Inside tells the tale of Sarah, a young pregnant woman who along with her unborn child survives a car accident that kills her husband. Months later, it's Christmas Eve, and a heavily pregnant grieving Sarah isn't exactly the festive spirit, but her night's about to get a lot worse. A mysterious woman who somehow knows Sarah's husband turns up and breaks into her house and starts attacking her with the intention of stealing her baby. Though several characters pop by and almost foil the man woman's plot, she manages to dispatch them all. Then comes the big reveal. The mysterious woman was also in the accident that killed Sarah's husband, and she too was pregnant but ended up losing her baby. A policeman who came round calling earlier but was dispatched managed to survive, eventually revives themselves, but confuses Sarah for her attacker and ends up clubbing her stomach and kick-starting the birth. The baby gets stuck and the mad woman does the unthinkable. She performs an impromptu and incredibly gory C-section with a pair of scissors. The movie ends with an eviscerated Sarah lying dead and bloody while the woman cradles her newborn who somehow managed to survive its botched job birth. And all we can do is wonder what's going to happen to the poor little sprog. Number 2. The Mist Based on a Stephen King novella, The Mist is set in a small main town under attack after a freak storm and a covert government project combine to accidentally unleash a horde of human-eating Lovecraftian monsters from another dimension. After escaping by car and witnessing the devastation wreaked by the monsters, David and the rest of his group eventually run out of gas. Rather than face horrific death at the hands of the monsters, the group enters a suicide pact. The only problem is, is that there are five of them and only four bullets. David bravely offers to face the monsters alone and mercy he kills his fellow survivors and son, before exiting the safety of the car to meet his fate. It's just then, though, that the military rocks up, having eliminated the interdimensional monster threat, and David is hit with the realization that had he waited just a few more minutes, his group, and more devastatingly, his son, would still be alive. Now, this tragedy is so close to comedy. Like, I have watched this with many people who have gone, oh my god, that's horrible, and other people have gone, oh my god, that's hilarious, because of how ridiculous it is. But at the same time, it is still an incredible incredibly messed up ending. And number one, don't look now. After the accidental drowning death of their young daughter, married couple Laura and John take a trip to Venice for him to work on a church restoration, but also to help the grief-stricken Laura recuperate. It's here that they meet two elderly, eccentric British sisters, one of who claims to be a psychic and is able to see their daughter. John is then plagued by weird visions that suggest that something awful is about to happen and catches glimpses of a childlike figure wearing a red coat, similar to the one that his daughter was wearing the day she died. But in the background of all of this, you hear that a series 
serial killer also just happens to be stalking Venice at the same time. Later in the film, once again, John sees the red-coated figure, but this time he gives chase. He corners the figure, blindly half-hoping alongside the more optimistic horror fans among us that it might be the ghost of his dead daughter. The figure turns around, but it is not the ghost of his daughter, but the crazed face of the serial killer, who slits his throat with a cleaver. As John bleeds to death, he sees his life flash before his eyes, and we see that those weird visions he was having was actually a premonition of his own gory death. Ooh. And there we go, my friends. Those were eight horror movies with seriously messed up endings. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comment section below. If you want to chat to me further, you can do so over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice. It's my personal gaming channel where I stream every single Wednesday and Sunday. Hope you're treating yourself well, both mentally and physically, my friends, because you deserve love, happiness, and success. We all do as humans. So let's try and build some bridges instead of burning them. And instead of just having one final girl at the end of the horror movie that is 2020, Maybe we can help each other out a bit more and get through the next couple of years together. Big love from me to you. Now go out there and absolutely smash it. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.